Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Alleluia. Friends, we are not eyewitnesses to an event as were Mary and the disciples. We have not ourselves journeyed through a dangerous city to seek answers or consolation. We have not seen angels gathering at the rim of this day or wept in the garden this morning because we could not find him. But we are here to attest to a story that has not lost its power during 20 centuries of change and conflict. We are here because those before us carried this story as if it were precious gold, cherished it as if it were the key to a hidden wisdom. Dear siblings in Christ, I invite you to take your places here today in celebration and in awe. What you're about to hear, again, has the capacity to change the world. And your very presence attests to the rising up of life, life from the tomb of despair, and to the uncontrollable power of God. It is Easter morning again, and we will celebrate. Hear this word from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, the first eight verses. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll this stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Now go and tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. O God of all creation, of life, of death, of life beyond death, we follow the footsteps of these faithful women on this Easter morning. We have come prepared, laden with spices and hearts full of grief. We come wanting to honor our ancient burial rituals and we arrive in stunned wonder. No obstacle of a large, too heavy stone. An empty bench where Jesus' body was supposed to be. An unknown visitor telling us tall tales. Jesus has risen. He's not here. He's gone ahead of you. Quell our fears, O oh God, when the world doesn't make sense. Slow down our rapid heartbeat when we are paralyzed with confusion or suspicion. Restore to us fresh breath to see, to dream, to hold on to one another. Do not allow our terror to halt our steps. Sweep us out of the tomb into your blinding light. Give us courage to follow Jesus wherever he goes. Let us collect our spices and downcast spirits so that we might bring light and healing to a broken world. It is in our resurrection faith that we pray. Amen.
there was a woman in one of the congregations I served that I dearly loved. She was at worship every Sunday. She was very active in the missional ministries of the church. She was a widow and lived alone. And I hugged her every Sunday morning after worship. I was known as a hugging pastor and I always knew who wasn't comfortable with being hugged, and so, of course, I would honor that. One morning, she stayed behind until the last person had gone through the greeting line, and she said, Pastor, I just want to thank you for hugging me. And I said, well, <clears throat> well, thank you. I look forward to seeing you and to receiving your hug every week. And she told me, but you don't understand. You're the only hug I get all week long. And there followed for me a, a holy and deep silence. And I realized again the power of touch, the power and joy of simply being held. And so here we are honoring the power of touch on a resurrection day and being held by a loving and sustaining God in a time of pandemic, in a world where there is so much wrong going on. Fear of death, fear of even life itself. We are being held, held by a God as we groan and wait for the power of resurrection. What we can say today is that God is embracing this world, holding disease and war, economic collapse, political divisions, fractures in our very families, our society, and indeed our church. And we are called to hold on to one another in prayer, in actions, in solidarity, and to grasp resurrection hope. Christ is risen today. He is risen indeed. As you go forth from this time of worship, go forth in the joy and peace of a risen Christ, ready to be his presence in the world. Amen.